Hello, <clears throat> Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is uh, February 26th of 2019. This is February, so there's only 28 days this this year. So this month's going to be over with pretty, pretty quick. I hope this is going to be a fast video. <clears throat> Don't get me sidetracked on something. Uh, wanted to wanted to comment on this because this was in Kansas City, Kansas, that uh, water slide that uh, where this young boy, ten years old, was decapitated, and uh, the parents, I believe, won a, if I remember correctly, they won a major amount of money. Uh, from suing because apparently the water slide, the guy who designed it had apparently no credentials for doing that type of stuff and apparently they were, things didn't work out with it. They were, the company was, it was a water park in Kansas City, Kansas. Why well, I was born and raised in Kansas City, Missouri, left in 2000, not Kansas City, Missouri, the real Kansas City. Uh, this is Kansas City, Kansas. When I was in grade school, we all the kids in the neighborhood would go to the movies twice a week. And like in westerns, when they would mention Kansas, we would all boo. And I'm sure the kids in Kansas, when Missouri was mentioned, I'm sure they all booed uh, because we were in Missouri because of the Missouri, Kansas situation from before the Civil War, I'm sure. I mean, we probably didn't know, but it's just, well, maybe kids in New York and New Jersey, maybe they've been the same, maybe they're dead, I don't know. Of course, if Missouri was mentioned, or if Kansas City was mentioned, there, it was like during Western, there'd be like in the Western movies, uh, we're, well, this uh, herd of cattle, we're driving up, you know, uh, to Missouri, and then we would all applaud since we were in Missouri. So, so I don't like Kansas. <laughs> but this was in Kansas. They didn't have a, a water park when when I lived up there. Yeah, uh, Kansas City, Kansas, and Wyandotte County where this happened. Uh, ugh, they weren't the best. Um, anyway, uh, there was major charges, criminal charges. Um, you know, the parents won a civil suit for damages and extra money to, as uh, uh, penalties to uh, discourage companies from doing stuff like this. But then they, the major criminal charges were brought against. I believe this guy is... Uh, I think the charges were what? Anyway, major, and they've been busy. apparently the judge has dismissed them. I think they can, they might you know refile them or something. Uh, this is on CNN today. This is really interesting uh, because of the climate warming, warming, and. Uh, areas of ice are melting, uh, archaeologists are finding, here's a, uh, in Norway, archaeologists uh, are finding, or they found in this case, a 1,000 year old arrow, 1,400 years old, and then it goes on to, uh, here's a, uh, Viking arrow was found at an ice site. Uh, nearly 70 arrows have been found on this site, and the oldest one dates back 6,000 years. And then here's this, uh, they're talking about this, what they call the the Iceman, the O to Z, or whatever, I'm sure I'm pronouncing it wrong, that was found years ago. 
1991, okay. This 5,300-year-old was discovered in the Alps uh, in 1991 between Austria and Italy. And if I remember correct, uh, later it was just, I think it was discovered that uh, that actually was in Germany or, or or something, or maybe it was Austria. <clears throat> but uh, that's kind of interesting because I remember this when um, I was working security at a small hospital. We were all like family. There was such a small hospital. And uh, a nurse there, uh, Penny, a really a young nurse, and she had like six or seven kids, and she was born again Christian, and both her and her husband had gone to Bible college, and then they met in Bible college, and they were married. They didn't have a TV at home because of, you know, they were uh, Christians and what have you, and uh, she had taken her kids, she homeschooled her kids, and I gave her crap sometimes about that, but she, I'd say, well, because, you know, and she'd say, no, I take my kids to places, and, uh, you know, so she was reputing my uh, things. I said, oh, okay, that's good. I did not, oh, this it didn't happen in one conference, you know, it's over years we worked together. And uh, anyway, she said, well, I took my kids to Hallmark Cards uh, down there, they have a uh, display of dinosaurs or something or other. And I said, ah, I said, so, you know, how old are those dinosaurs? And then she said something, that, I can't remember exactly, this had been back in the, well, the early 1990s. Uh, she said, well, they couldn't be older than 10,000 years because the earth is, and I said, that's what I was waiting for. So you still think that, and you went and saw this display about dinosaurs, she says, yeah, yeah, they're wrong on the age and everything. So uh, we, did, you know, we went back and forth on that a little bit, not angrily or anything. Uh, and uh, in the morning, when if the ER nurses, there were just two of them working in the ER, if they were busy, they might be, and they worked a 12-hour shift. And on Saturday and Sunday, I worked a 12-hour shift. And then the other two days, I worked eight-hour shift. But they might be, you know, their, their last patients might have come in. Of course, they might have come in all night long. Their last patients might have come in at 3 o'clock in the morning. But the nurses would still have to be, they'd be, have to be charting. And uh, the newspaper would come. I'd have to, that was one of my jobs to go pick up the newspapers that were left at the front door and take one to the emergency room, take one to the second floor nursing station, take one to the ICU if the ICU was open, and uh, take one to the mailbox slots in there for the administration to get it, something like, I can't remember. I think that was about it. <clears throat> so I'd go to the ER and I'd look at the newspaper real quick. Well, the nurses would say, Jim, if they were charting, read us. The headlines let us know what's, what's on the paper or whatever and so they had then they had an article and I don't know if it was 1941 I mean I don't know if that's 1941 that's how I was born in 19, 1991 on this but because it might have been a little bit later I think it might, was a little bit later than that because um Remember the newspaper article said, <clears throat> so I think they found him maybe, and then a little bit later they did a carbon dating, and and they it was, so I'm not sure it was probably after 1991, but it said, and I thought it said 10,000. Now it's saying here that uh, what 5,000 years old, 5,300. Maybe they updated. It says here found and was discovered in, anyway, or maybe they did say 10,000 years old and now they have changed it to this. 
but uh, so I, I read the paper. I was like, wow. I said, oh, Penny, by the way, remember you said, you know, that the earth was only 10,000 years old or whatever. Well, they found this man they call the Ice Man, and he is 10,000 years old. So I, apparently, apparently they have found Adam and uh, Adam had has tattoos on him or whatever. So she, well, I'm not sure she laughed, but she, you know, so. But now it's, I'm pretty sure that it was, because I think the Christian, a lot of born again Christians, I think they say 10,000 years. So it seems to me that she said 10,000, but they're saying 5,000. Maybe the uh, carbon dating has been updated or maybe my memory has, has gone. Uh, I've said in, uh, I, I, I've, very, I've flown in my life very few times. Although when I was just out of high school or whatever, I took a flying lesson, one flying lesson. And, uh, but, so I have, in my life I've flown very few times. Uh, and now with my enlarged prostate and bladder problems or whatever, I do not look forward to flying. I think a lot of old men are in my, you know, my position. But I see they've come up with some, are coming up with some improved seats for economy. I, I'm not sure if I blogged about it back a few years ago or if it was a video that I made here on YouTube back a few years ago, I, I think those seats, I think those seats that they cramp you into are, are just, I don't think flyers should put up with it. And, and all it would take was a whole bunch of flyers, you know, passengers just saying, I'm not, I'm not going to use your, you know, not going to buy a ticket on your aircraft unless you improve the seats. And, uh, I mean, and I even, I, I think, blogged or said here on, made a video blog that, you know, passengers could just uh, do sort of a rolling protest or whatever, say, uh, you know, on such and such a day to Sunday or a Saturday or something where they're, we're not flying. I mean, it would be, you know, of course the airlines would say, well, we have to raise prices and if we put in bigger seats, and of course, passengers should say no, you know. Put in better seating, and do not raise your prices, or we're not gonna. And they, you know. But not gonna happen. I mean, passengers are not going to, and of course, some people positively have to fly. You know, if you have a death in the family or or whatever, but certain things you positively have to fly. But, yeah. Like I said, I could almost count the number of times I, after high school, I went to real est Weaver School of Real Estate, and then I went to welding school in Cleveland, Ohio, and I took the train from Kansas City, that was when John F. Kennedy was, uh, had won, but he hadn't been, let's see, no, I had to vote. That was uh, when uh, Nixon and John F. Kennedy were running and the uh, voting was coming up and I would be in Cleveland, Ohio, actually Euclid, Ohio, and I voted by absentee ballot. So anyway, I took the train there, and that was uh, and along because because I'm not able, I wasn't able to sleep. And oh, I remember this is going to be a little bit longer than. Uh, got to Euclid, I got to Cleveland, Ohio by train. I took the bus out to Euclid, Ohio, and there was a. I had a, it was set up that I was to have, or maybe I hadn't got it yet. I, I was to rent a room because the school, Lincoln, Lincoln Electric Company, welding school, had, you know, so I was to rent a room from a lady. But I got there and I 
went to a, there was a motel there. And of course, well, there was no cars, maybe one or two cars in a big motel and uh, with the individual little things, you know, next to each other. And I went there and uh, I said, I need a, uh, you know, I need a room for the night. And he said, okay. And then he smiled and he said, I'll set you up over such and such over there. You'll like that. So I was just exhausted, you know. Okay. So I went there, checked in. And then that night, uh, and like I had at the end, it had like the middle, you know, there was cabin, or they weren't separated, but you know, like, and then I had this, and then there was, you know, a vacant one. They were all vacant, except for me, and I didn't have a car, because I, so anyway, I was there and trying to sleep, and then I think after the drive-in movies let out or whatever, uh, a couple, two couples got the room next to me, and then on the other side there was a couple, and uh, they were in there, and then I could hear them having sex, and I could hear everything they were saying and going on, and I thought, oh, that's why the guy smiled and gave me this, so I just tried to sleep through that. So, anyway, oh yeah, so I took the train out there, then after welding school was over, I flew back from there, uh, from Cleveland to Kansas City, Missouri. But when I was in grade school or high school, my father was working in Council Bluffs, Iowa, on a, uh, he was a boilermaker on a boiler job up there. And so we flew up by, for the summer, we flew up by a small aircraft. Uh, I guess you call them commuter aircraft or whatever. We flew up there. And then we, you know, we came back with him in the car at the end of the summer. Um, let's see, when else did I fly? Can't, well, let's see. Well, when I left Kansas City in 2000, after I did the, after I retired from security, and what, I didn't exactly retire because I worked, but I did the 2000 census. Then we'd see, we drove to, uh, Jimmy and I, to, Orlando, Florida, stayed about a year in Orlando, Florida, then came back by aircraft, <clears throat> <clears throat> then ended up driving with my son Ken from Kansas City, oh no, I left, yeah, I left Texas and went by got went to Kansas City I guess by car then rode with Ken to Miami spent five years there with Ken and then Russ joined us down there and then Russ and I left there and we flew you know to Dallas, Texas. We're in Fort Worth now. So I think that's about it. I think I may have forgotten a flight someplace or sometime, but that's it. I know a lot of you men flying on airplane, but it just pisses me off these the seat situations or whatever. Uh, I wish on this vote, House, you know, voted and almost got a two thirds. Uh, vote so they could overturn a veto, but they don't have a two-thirds and they're not going to. But anyway, then the Senate is going to vote and it's going to pass in the Senate, apparently, but there won't be enough in case, which you will, 
in case Trump, you know, vetoes it. I wish that the Republicans would join in. This is an important issue for the Constitution, for the government, for our system. And I wish the Republicans had the courage, but they don't. They're terrified of Trump that he's going to say something against them and it's going to cost them, you know, the next election or whatever. But I wish they had the courage and the honor of doing what they need to do, profiles and courage. I wish they had, but uh, that's not going to happen in the Senate. I believe it's going to pass in the Senate, but it's uh, not going to have the necessary votes. It would be great if it did have the votes where, you know, then Trump would veto it and then they would go back and vote and override his veto. That would really that would really be something and the way the system's supposed to work. But even here with these votes, this is going to the courts and I think he would lose. I think Trump is going to lose would lose anyway. But this will be taken into consideration when the Supreme Court is looking at this. They're going to say, well, you know, he did this because he didn't get what he wanted and he, uh, you know, uh, and so here is even more evidence that the legislative body, which is the one that the finances and the deciding who gets money and how much and all that kind of stuff is rested in, it's, uh, that'll even show more. I don't think they need it, but it's going to show, no, here they, the legislative branch, you know, objected to them doing it, and they even passed resolutions with a majority in both houses saying no. So, I guess in the House, 13 Republicans voted with the Democrats, so hats off to them, and especially to House members because they're only elected for two years, so they're facing they're facing re-election all the time. Um, and Cohen has been disbarred in New York State, uh, and he's going to prison for three years. But today he testified before the Senate uh, committee, and that was uh, not public. But he's testifying tomorrow before the House committee, and that will be public, and it will be televised and everything else. Uh, and then he's appearing Wednesday before another committee, and I think that's not being televised. Um, but anyway, he's, of course, he's a felon and is going to spend three years in prison, which is, that's a good deal for him, really. I mean, he made a good deal. Uh, but uh, because he's a felon, he can't have a uh, license as a lawyer. When I worked, well, I don't know, not, um, and Cohen, he got that deal for three years, but he, after that deal was made, he, uh, he lied to the United States Senate. So he apologized for that. So he's lucky he's just getting three years. Um, that reminds me of, and I looked it up the other day for some reason, I can't remember the name now. Back during the Gulf War or Iraq or whatever, I can't remember. Um, okay, Obama was elected. <clears throat> and a doctor was in the military, and I he wasn't an MD, and I'm not saying anything against well against chiropractors. I think I I know a lot of people 
like the chiropractic treatment and, and swear by that, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. I don't remember if the doctor that was in the military was a chiropractor or a osteopathic doctor. Now, I, I've known a lot of doctors that are orthopathic, orthopath, I can't even say it now, uh, even ER doctors, and they were great. Some of them, they were better than, you know, uh, but uh, chiropractic, I don't want to go into that, but Well, let me give you one example, though. Uh, there was a lady whose husband was, I think she was also a chiropractic doctor, but advanced in age. And her husband was a chiropractor. And he had a practice. Well, he had passed away. And there were three chiropractic offices, if I remember correct, that she owned and she hired in you know, chiropractors to uh, work those. Well, her policy, you know, she hired in, uh, her policy was that they treated everything and you were not to refer anybody that came in. If a patient came in, you were not to refer them to another doctor. You were to do the chiropractic treatment or whatever, you know, and they can write prescriptions. So, but still, and that was, and I knew a ICU nurse who was also a chiropractor. And she quit and went to work in one of these offices. And she told me later about a number of, you know, things that happened. And like one was somebody came in, and I forget exactly, somebody came in who needed to, <laughs> who needed to be seen by a cardiologist and uh, maybe needed a pulmonary doctor and uh, somebody who, you know, you don't do a spinal adjustment on these people. But that's what the lady, you know, so anyway, this, nurse slash chiropractor, she uh, sent this patient on to an emergency room and the uh, patient was admitted to the intensive care unit or whatever and with bad cardio, you know, that needed all the, and the uh, owner of that chiropractic office or whatever gave her hell and told her and so she quit and went back to, that's how I ran into her. She went back to being an ICU nurse. So a bunch of, so I, chiropractors, you know, if you, if they're pushing on your spine or something and that's curing your cancer and uh, everything else, well, well, more power to you. Uh, but like I said, osteopath, but I think this military doctor, I believe, he was an osteopathic, osteopathic doctor. So he was in the military and Obama was elected. And then this doctor got orders to uh, leave the United, you know, to go with his unit to Iraq, I think. And he, ref you may remember the case, he refused to go because he said the orders were signed or came from an illegitimate uh, commander in chief that, oh, President Obama was not president of the United States, that he was born in uh, Kenya, Kenya and uh, refused to show his birth certificate or whatever. And so anyway, this came up. And then of course, the re a group, not all the Republicans, but a group of the extreme, you know, the Trump Trumpies, although Trump wasn't running for, but that that uh, group of Republicans, oh, uh, he was their hero, and uh, their right wing crazy sites or whatever. Oh, what you know, what a wonderful, and uh, he persisted in, you know. You know, the military was 
being very gentle with him, I thought. And I was like, you know, take him out and fucking shoot him, you know. Or not really, but I'm, you know, exaggerating my position. But, uh, so they persisted, they tried to get him, you know. Well, the order, I don't know exactly what the, you know, well, the, you know, the commander in chief is not, you know, President Obama is not ordering you. You know, General So and So signed these orders for your unit to go, and no, he wouldn't. You know, the illegitimate commander in chief, and I don't recognize him, and just went on. And I thought, my God, and they, you know, they drug it out, <clears throat> gave him all kinds of opportunities, like ways to get out of the thing, and meantime, the right wing, crazy right wing, was oh, oh, this, you know, he's being tormented and tortured and, and you know, and it's all Obama's fault because he's, a, you know, Obama had nothing to do, you know, with it. <clears throat> and uh, eventually he went to trial. He got, eventually he got court-martialed. And uh, I think the, the extremely crazy, you know, right-wing Republicans they were upset because I don't think it was even, I mean, he used it as a defense. You know, well, the commander in chief is not legitimate, but the courts and everything, what, what they were, you know, you know, did you receive your orders to go with your unit to Iraq? You know, yes or no. Yes, I got it, but we don't care about the but, you know, did you, did you get them? And, you know, did you get them again? Were you informed? Were you called in and told you need to deploy, you know? Yes, and of course he's bringing up, you know, we don't care about that. And uh, so anyway, he was, he received a dishonorable discharge and he went to, I forget how long, he went to prison, Fort Leavenworth prison, and I've never been in the military, but I've, I don't think you want to be in a military prison, and especially you don't want to be in Fort... Wait a minute, am I thinking of Fort Leonard Wood? Where is it? Well, anyway. Whichever one it was. You don't, you don't want to be in any federal... You don't want to be in any military prison. And uh, he was there for a few years, I think. I forget how long. And he got out, and he... Uh, well, then he wasn't the big hero that, you know, they still, you know, they, that kind of, but he got out, and then, of course, he was just, uh, I started to say disbarred, but he couldn't get his medical license. He had tried to get his medical license back in the state of Kansas, I believe it was, said, no, you're a felon, and you can't be a doctor and be a felon and you can't get it back. And then he appeared on, you know, some places, right-wing sites as, oh, the poor persecuted man. He fought against, uh, you know, Obama, who's not from, you know, who is not elected, really elected president, a little illegitimate president, all that type of stuff. And they, he was their hero a little bit, but not like he was before. But I just, for some reason, the other day, I did a search. I was wondering, what happened to him? And I did a search and found, I can't remember his name now, but I did a search, and he still has not got his medical license back. He went to some other states or states and uh, didn't get it back. And... Uh, What he's doing now is going to court repeatedly, and it's being rejected by the courts. He has uh, so he uh, he was as a doctor in the military, and I forget if his rank was captain or uh, major. I think it might have been a captain. I'm guessing now. I can't remember, but. Uh, I know he wasn't a lieutenant, so I'm guessing he was a captain. Because that's what they, you know, the right wing, now it's, you know, very little, you know, they've forgotten about him uh, a little bit. The right wing, 
doesn't intend to forever forget anything. Uh, he, uh, whoops, you know, there's a thing that Windows has where you can call up. What is that now? You can see what you've looked at for the last few days. Forget where it is or what it is. And it's also in some of the browsers. Maybe that's where it is. Anyway, <laughs> what he's been doing now for all these years, uh, he's take. let's say it was captain. He's taken his rank of captain and how much the salary would have been for the year and then he's taken all those years and multiplied that and come up with a large amount of money that would be and he's going to court and then actually even worse even more nutty than that is he's going by well if i had been if i had stayed in the military with x number of years i would be I don't know what, I, I'm not sure what rank he figures out that he would be after X number of years. So let's say that he's now saying that he would be a, uh, a colonel, a lieutenant colonel or a colonel. So he figures after, you know, a couple years and I would have been, and he takes, and he takes that amount of money that he would have got. And he's taking, you know, other amounts of money that other benefits that he would have got housing or what, you know, He's taking all those, and I forget what the amount of money, a large amount of money, he went to federal court and says, the government owes me this amount of money. And the judge or the judges or whatever were like, take a fucking hike, you know, so that's, so. Anyway, how did I get on that subject? Well, the new, some news story got me on that subject. Oops, I wanted to go to, there we go. Uh, I like this other camera better, I think. Oops. There we go. So anyway, yeah, Cohen has been disbarred. Let me look here at the... Uh, Wow, there's so many stories. Patient treatment leaves radiation contamination in a crematorium. Patient must have had an implant of uh, cancer patients' treatments leave radiation contamination. Let's see. Radi radioactivity was detected on the ovens, vacuum filter, and the bone crushers of an Arizona crematoria where a deceased man who had received radiation therapy was incinerated, according to a new case report. Still worse, a radioactive compound unrelated to the dead man's death was detected in the, in the urine of an employee there. It is I can't read today. It's likely that the crematory operator was exposed while cremating other human remains. Uh, so, anyway, it goes on that, um, back when I was in high school, I was, back when Cold War was going on, when people were building bomb shelters, I was in the Ground Observer Corps watching for Russian aircraft, and we were in Kansas City, Missouri. If we saw Russian bombers, in the middle of the United States, that was a kind of late to, uh, we would pick up the phone and dial operator and say aircraft flash, then identify our post and those calls took priority over other all the other calls, those operators. I got connected, I remember I was in Kansas City, Missouri. I called in, you didn't just call in Russian air, you called in aircraft. I forget the exact, if there were some that were excluded, I can't remember now. But 
they connected me with Montreal, Canada, uh, Canadian Air Defense one time because they had to get you connected immediately. But um, so anyway, I was also uh, trained in Missouri as a radiological monitor. So if the cold, although light, they didn't issue me a uh, Geiger counter, but uh, my job would have been when the bomb went off and we all came out, of, well, we wouldn't all come out of the shelter. I'd be one of the people who would come out first and go back and say it's safe or not safe or where it's safe or not safe. I had that training, but um, I worked hospital security for 30 years and not all of, we also were security and safety and at one hospital we were, hospital system, we were trained as the first responders for um, Uh, situations with contamination and that type of stuff. I mean, naturally, if you have a big gasoline spill or if you have certain things, you're going to have the fire department respond with their OSHA people with their, what do you call it, uh, people. But uh, we handled a lot of uh, the stuff like broken thermometers that had mercury in them. Uh, although if you're my age, I can remember being in grade school and uh, uh, a kid in grade school had broken a whole bunch of thermometers and had the mercury, big ball of mercury, and was rolling it around on the desk and other kids were saying, let me see that, you know, whatever. But uh, the chemotherapy treatment, that stuff, is highly toxic and really bad and occasionally an IV would be started on somebody with this and uh, there would be signs put up but occasionally the IV would come out or something like that would happen we would be called and have to go up and uh, do our thing but basically like uh, that'd be a situation where we'd had to have it we'd have to have the carpet re carpeting removed or whatever so we would have to call, you know, the plant operations people to come up and, and make sure that they, but they knew, but we'd have to make sure they gloved up and that they put it in special bags and all that type of stuff. I wasn't working. Okay, also, uh, some patients have a radioactive pill or BB or whatever, different things put into their body. And, you know, some patients go and have uh, down to radiology and have procedures done, but some had procedures done in the room and there'd be a radio and there'd be a sign put up, you know, so pregnant nurses would not go into that would be a, wouldn't be a sign there, and so I wasn't working, but uh, also in the hospitals there are radiation detectors. Uh, like I know they're located uh, so that people who pick up trash in the hospital and come down to take it down to go to the dock to go into trash uh, things or whatever, there are radiation detectors there to detect, to make sure, you know, that that pellet or whatever doesn't end up in the, or go to our laundry too, you know, get wrapped up you know, end up in the laundry, and when the laundry goes into, you know, to make sure. Anyway, I wasn't working, but some patient, whatever it was, um, it didn't get, it did not get detected, and ended up getting into the trash. It did not go into the hazmat trash, which was separate from other trash. It went in with the regular trash, and then the trash truck took it to the landfill or whatever, and when there are radiation detectors at the landfill, and as this truck arrived, the radiation detectors went off and the truck was sent back 
to the hospital and the security and the uh, doctor radiologist who was in charge of the entire all of you know scanning and all that type of stuff uh, they had the trash dumped in the you know an area that that was not was free of other cars and stuff they dumped it there and I, I'll give I wasn't working but our director of security uh, who was you know wore a suit and what have you and uh, was in charge of more than 25 security officers and the radiologist the head doctor that was in charge of all of the and other hospitals that were connected to that hospital he went out there they both of them went out there with uh, put on their little hazmat suits and gloves and dug through the trash with a Geiger counter and found you know found it and then the trash could be hauled away I give them credit that they didn't you know of course when I was in charge I wasn't in charge of well a few times not at that hospital I was the acting uh, well I was in a shift supervisor then for a while for three months or so I was over all three shifts and then whenever the director of security would be in the hospital as a patient or on vacation or whatever I was always put in charge you know taking his place but I always you know I didn't delegate it to, to somebody else I always did the dirty work and but I give it to credit to these you know two people you know that they didn't delegate it to somebody you know they went out, they went out there and dug through the trash and found it so this is interesting story the uh, at that hospital the doctor the radiologist that was in charge of um, all of that x-ray cat scanners all that type uh, all that type of stuff once a year he would uh, come and give us a little talk all the security officers a little bit of a talk or whatever and he seemed really nice and he's of course <laughs> knowledgeable or whatever but well I won't go into that story well I will make it real quick I worked at a well I worked both but I worked for 11 years at this small hospital that was part of the main hospital and so when I w was working there I'd be the only security officer of course working there and I would have to go back to x-ray and help pull people's shoulders down so they could get the cervical all the and I'd have to hold patients down that it, motorcycle guys that have been on motorcycles and uh, hit their heads or whatever or people that were drunk I'd have to hold them down and they sometimes I then the radiologist I'm sure wasn't supposed to do that but sometimes the radiologist would you know say Jim I'm setting the settings here I'm gonna because I need to get this just they have procedures a certain you know because I need to get it just right push the button when I tell you to so I push the button but anyway when I went down for one of these training things or whatever the radiologist was saying such and such now now are uh, the people that go in you know they have the they wear the you know the vest and they have the uh, radiation pen and those pens are checked you know I forget how often he said once a week once a month or whatever to see if there's any radiation or whatever and everybody who goes and I said uh, doctor I work at you know research at Belton Hospital and and I help out in radiology because there's just one uh, x-ray you know tech there I help out you know quite a bit do I need one should we should, should we be wearing one of those uh, no it, it's just if you know or I forget I don't know if you said I'm not can't remember exactly you know now uh, you know he says how often do you help out and I'd say and I said well I'd say a typical Saturday and Sunday when there's a lot of drunks nights and stuff a Friday Saturday and Sundays 
lot of drunks or whatever. I'm probably in there, you know, pulling down the arms for the serve. I probably six, seven times, a, you know, a night or whatever. And it was like, oh, uh, I forget what he said. Let me check on that. <laughs> so, I've had a couple skin cancers, which has nothing to do with, I've had a couple skin cancers removed on my head. But that's caused by being out in the sun all the time. Because I don't think you generally, you know, I have to, in fact, I think uh, here this next month I have to go, go to, I think go, I see, I think I see him about once every six months. He'll check me. I hope he doesn't find anything because I've seen some of the people in his office and oh, I don't want to, you know, Mine was this big one on top of the head, which I've been in dip. That went for a long. That was uh, several, you know, several people said. Because uh, that went several years on top of my head. Got that big. He had a hell of a job taking care of that. And then the other one was real small. But, uh, so uh, what was... What did I want to cover? Oh, okay, a little bit of an update. A little bit of, this is an interesting story. I want to come back and read the entire thing. Um, not sure if it'd do me any good to put a link for this below. I wish I could uninstall Facebook totally and totally do without. I don't go to Facebook, you know. I, I'm not even sure what that was. But I have the Facebook app on here and I hate Facebook. Um, okay, monitor situation. Um, I had yesterday or whatever, I had two 1080p ASUS monitors side by side. And then today I hooked up my 4K LG monitor and thought, oh, I can just adjust this so I can have 4K here and have 1080p here. And so I can drag stuff back and forth without it doing this, you know, ballooning up and whatever. And, and so again, I went through, hooked it up and uh, went, did a search again for everything. Went in, I know, you know, you're going to tell me, you know, I made those adjustments. I went in and font size. I went in and changed all these different, you know, things. And nothing works. So then I thought, okay, crap, I'll just buy another 4K monitor and I'll have two 4K monitors next to each other. And the price hasn't come down that much on 27 inch 4K monitors. And I really would like to get, you know, an LG the same. And I looked at the price and I thought, no. So I just kicked this thing back into 1080p mode. And I have so Asus 1080p and my 4K monitor LG in 1080 mode. Um, I think that is, I don't know if you can hear our cat going at my door. Um, I think that's it, except, remember I was in the hospital with, I got a small scrape on my leg and it got bad. I don't have good circulation to my extremities, especially my legs. Um, so I try to be very careful now to, and my legs don't look all that great. They don't look as bad as some people that I've seen. Uh, but. 
So I try to make sure our cat does not scratch me on the leg because I'm not sure if it's, you know, will heal. That's what happened with a small scrape on my leg from a bed frame here. It just never healed and it got, then it started getting worse and I sort of ignored it, you know, I thought, well, and uh, ended up in the hospital for six days. And uh, anyway, the DDR cat just scratched me on my foot. So, and, but for somebody who doesn't have good circulation to that f legs, to the legs or the foot, it bled pretty good. So, I'm hoping that I do not get an infection. I go around barefooted. And if you have diabetes and if you have poor circulation or whatever, you really should, you know, check your shoes before you put, I can't even get my feet in shoes. I have to use sandals. Uh, you need to check your shoes and make sure there's not a rock or something inside one of your shoes. And you should wear socks and things to protect your feet. So I need to, I may need to get me some fuzzy, soft, house shoes. Shoes are, I think, about the only thing you really can't buy on uh, Amazon and get the correct size. Maybe it's just me. Anyway, I want to thank you very much for watching, and uh, I'll be making a, I'll probably be doing some live streaming here, maybe, because I have uh, the new program with, what is it, um, uh, Streamlabs OBS, not their OBS, but their Streamlab, Streamlabs OBS, and it looks really nice, and it'll be great for streaming, so maybe getting some streaming video here from me before long. I want to play with it a little bit. I played with it the other day. You may have seen the video. Thank you very much for uh, for watching.